Welcome to the Dev Ready Podcast. My name is Andrew Romeo, and today we're lucky enough to be joined by Craig McFarlane. Uh, Craig uh, works at a company called Essilor. Essilor is one of the largest manufacturers of lens lenses that we wear in our glasses uh, every day. Um, so Craig, what he does at Essilor is he's basically the Director of Education and Professional Services, and that encompasses Asia-Pacific, uh, the Middle East, Russia, and Africa. So quite a big landscape there that Craig's working in. Uh, the reason why we got Craig in, he's worked on a number of um, technical projects and coming from a non-tech perspective, basically getting an understanding of what it means to him to deliver a technical project and the learnings he's had along the journey. Uh, Craig started building uh, technology with Essilor uh, to deliver outcomes for his business um, probably nine, ten years ago. And he shares some stories around what has worked, what hasn't, and the way they now approach the development process uh, within bite-sized chunks. So enjoy the podcast. Craig shares some really good stories, and I know you get a lot out of it. So Craig, um, thanks for joining us on the Dev Ready Podcast. Great to have you in the studio here, slash office space, slash meeting room. <laughs> thanks Great for coming. Great to be here, thank you. Yeah, cheers, appreciate you coming out. So Craig's from um, Essilor, uh, Director of Education and Professional Services in um, Asia Pacific, Middle East, Russia and Africa. Uh, tell Great. us a bit about what you do, Craig. Um, so Essilor is the world's largest um, spectacle lens manufacturer mm -hmm. um, and so we, uh, uh, we work throughout the world um, with optometrists, mm -hmm. um, with ophthalmologists, uh, etc. And, and providing, supplying um, spectacle lenses yes. um, and frames and, and we also have, have some uh, retail as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially my role is to educate um, that vast region. Yes. Um, and lift the market, um, so okay. to speak. So mm -hmm. it's working with, with, with business owners, um, it's working with optometrists, it's working with ophthalmologists mm -hmm. in helping them to develop their skills, mm -hmm. um, their understanding, um, also their awareness of the market. Yes. Um, and that in itself will help them to grow mm -hmm. um, and to build very successful businesses. So yeah. in a nutshell, that's, that's really the, um, the role that, mm -hmm. that, that I face. Now across our region, we have um, many, many different teams in each country. Mm -hmm. Uh, each one of them is, you know, focused on developing their market and developing the industry within that market and, mm -hmm. and helping them through education, um, other support um, to really lift the knowledge and understanding within markets. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we support them as well, um, support the teams in country. So from the teams in country, you obviously got a vast area that you're supporting. So um, in terms of helping and supporting those, do you find differences within those countries and what that looks like in terms of obviously data is different in different countries? There's more buying in different countries. I think you mentioned pre this, there's more growth going on in Africa right now. What, how do you manage all that across those countries? It's a really good question. Um, and it's something that you, you we're constantly learning yeah. um, because each market is very different mm -hmm. um, from a professional perspective. Um, even, you know, in some markets, optometrists don't exist. Mm. Um, so it might be okay. an ophthalmology market and then there might be a regulated or maybe not, a, maybe an unregulated mm -hmm. um, optician market. Uh, in which case it, it presents a lot of challenges from from a market perspective in mm. in, in lifting mm. the knowledge and understanding to be able to to prescribe our products get it um, from an internal perspective yes there's many many differences between markets there's different mm. mindsets there's different understandings there's there's different cultural components as well mm. that come into this as uh, also, definitely. Um, even learning processes. So, uh, in some countries, it's very much you know multiple choice type mm -hmm. processing, and then that, that 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 extends across into the way that people actually consider problems. Mm. Um, and so, okay. it does become quite uh, quite challenging, um, and it takes some time to, to to fully understand that. So, just going back to educating people yeah. across across those contexts. I mean, the, the the primary mode of education is face to face, okay. um, because people do need to have the um, the opportunity to practice their skills mm -hmm. um, and so but over such a large area we mm -hmm. do also need to extend our reach as much as possible so Get if you're it. a trainer you can only train so many people mm -hmm. uh, in a year mm -hmm. so looking at different ways that people can access information and mm -hmm. access um, education is very mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. and so this is where we've been looking down the digital path mm -hmm. um, in looking how can we get information across to these different markets mm -hmm. even though they're all quite different um, in the way that you know culturally etc as, as I mentioned before um, uh, but how can we get across to them and, and, and have an access to information and education that works for them um, so that's 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 
That's the challenge you're working on right that's now. A, that's the challenge <laughs> that we've been working on yeah. for, for quite some time. Get it. Um, mm. And yeah, it's it's one that we'll always be working on. Mm. Yeah, appreciate that. I was given the vast variety of people that you're dealing with. Some might be, like you said, professional or outfits. Some might be a little bit less professional in the way they operate. So it becomes challenging. And then do they want education would be another thing. So what's the uptake like when you get into those sort of markets? Yeah, so the motivation aspect mm -hmm. of somebody actually wanting to do the training. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out um, what's going to motivate this person to do yes. um, a particular training or, 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 um, or learning. Um, and so being able to focus on the outcome for the individual mm -hmm. by undertaking something is very important. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that doesn't matter. Even, even with digital um, access to information and to education, where's the motivation? How long does the training program need to be? Mm -hmm. What mode does it need to come across in? How is the person going to be accessing mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. training? And then you need to think about, well, within those markets, mm. what kind of digital devices do they have so that they can access that kind of material? What kind of access might they have in a business to, um, um, to the internet? As an example, <laughs> how stable is the internet? Get it. Get so it. there's lots of these components that come in. So even if you do have a digital solution, considering things such as the you know the offline access and and, mm. and all these kind of kind of things come into play, mm. um, and so it becomes quite complicated quite quickly. Yeah, definitely, especially from a technical rollout perspective. If you've got those challenges, lack of internet capability, it does become more of a we can't just put a SaaS product out there and everyone can access it. Maybe they can't for some reason. So it's very interesting how Correct. you look at those challenges. Yeah. Right. It needs to be like a multi-pronged approach, mm -hmm. not just digital. Because yeah, knowing from in the past working with SLO, we've had to factor in um, regional areas that don't even have computers potentially. <laughs> potentially, yes, and, yeah. and, and, and which and can be a problem. If you think yeah. talking about optical stores, there might be one computer in the entire store. Now, if somebody's mm -hmm. going through a, a sales process, that computer is occupied. Get it. Um, so when are they supposed to do their do their training? So mm. we are moving more towards mm -hmm. um, smartphones and digital devices. Yep. But mm -hmm. that comes back to that motivation again mm -hmm. for the individual to actually complete understand um, okay. the training. Yeah, because yep. I know in yeah, parts of Africa from researching, the phone is the first computer they've ever gonna ever had, mm. and probably the last computer they're gonna own is <laughs> just a mobile phone. Yeah, mm -hmm. they've gone from nothing to that. So. Mm -hmm. That's probably an interesting point to take on. Yes, yes, and then and then when you when you're considering things such as through the mobile phone, it, the traditional sort of online learning or e-learning, mm -hmm. um, it's really designed for a computer. Yeah, um, it is. And so if people are using their mobile phones, thinking about you know how much information you're putting mm -hmm. out there, how long mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. um, because how engaged is somebody really aside from social media mm -hmm. on yep. their phone mm -hmm. um, to do an education? And I know myself in in having done you know. Um, e-learning or online mm -hmm. uh, education, that my attention span has definitely shifted, uh, mm -hmm. particularly yeah. over the last 10 years. So for me to actually concentrate for an extended period of time is quite difficult. Get it. And if we then consider, okay, we need to break it down and we need to have more micro learning type approach, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's another challenge that comes into it in that how do you take somebody on a journey of learning if it's always just by micro bursts of, mm. of information? So then it becomes a challenge, and then then um, there are certain components that, that, that everybody needs to know. Mm -hmm. um, but then, if they're not motivated to know it, so if they're the ones that are seeking the information out, and they're just looking at the micro learnings that, that they're interested in, yeah, then there's it. a whole swathe of information that they could be missing out on. Mm, yeah. um, and even that micro learning that they're looking to to um, to access may require a whole lot of foundation understanding to mm -hmm. begin with for mm -hmm. you to fully understand that micro learning so then that's another challenge so then it mm -hmm. then it comes back to more okay maybe we focus on it more from an introductory type perspective mm -hmm. in teaching fundamentals mm -hmm. um yep. through more micro learning so this blended learning approach is something that we are actually at this point in time working on okay. um, and, and looking at how it all you know, interrelates mm -hmm. so that we do still have that face-to-face -face and we have that experience and, and uh, interaction for somebody to, um, to learn by doing. Plus, we also have the ability to get information out and extend our reach um, through more digital um, uh, devices, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, and then working and additional information that might be available through other means and trying to work that all together and working in a way that it, it, together it's structured um, it. and provides a more blended approach. Interesting. Big problem. Yeah, probably. I guess it's probably <laughs> a problem <laughs> that most yeah. educational institutions will be facing something similar. The way people consume information has changed due to mobile devices and the attention spans that have altered with that. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, like behaviors have shifted all over the place, even from a from a consumer's perspective, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get somebody's uh, information across to a, to a consumer has become quite challenging these days. I think with the more, you know, say, university type um, education institutions, they 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 already have the motivation from the student because the student is probably more than likely paying. Yeah, they're paying True. something, right? Yeah. They're yes. not just so there for a reason to do this. And they want to yeah. get the certificate at the end. I yeah. think that in, in, in um, our sort of environment, a corporate type of environment, training somebody up and, and finding that motivation can be more of a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and so th that's something that we we really do need to deal with. So it's mm -hmm. important to show what the outcome potentially is mm -hmm. um, and what the impact could be. So in my areas where I work with a lot of business owners yes. um, in trying to develop them, um, is showing them, well, this is what the outcome can be if you do this education or if you implement. Mm -hmm. And if you're reading, if you were doing a micro learning or, or, or similar, the actual implementation of that, um, you know, if can be questionable um, yeah. because there's only a short amount of information that's coming across. And how do you implement that in your day to day life? What would you mm -hmm. consider micro learning? Um, Is it short bursts, five minute, ten minute? What What do you consider at this stage? At this stage, yeah. my personal um, uh, opinion is mm -hmm. uh, I look at it as being you know five ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, being a micro how much content can you get across in five ten minutes? That is a challenge. Yeah, it is a challenge. You can't yeah. get very much across, yeah. and, and for it to actually mm -hmm. go across and, and be mm -hmm. absorbed. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you know other people will say to me that a micro learning might be three minutes mm -hmm. or okay. thirty seconds. Okay. Um, now I can be quite verbose when I'm speaking, so getting something across in 30 <laughs> seconds might be a, bit, a little bit yeah. of a problem. Um, and so yeah. that's you know, and and so people do have different yeah. different opinions about micro learning, mm -hmm. um, different ideas on it, um, and different ways that it should be used. I think it's dangerous to think that 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 education or education be, can become micro learning mm -hmm. because you you aren't on a developmental path necessarily so if it's all micro learning mm. um that structure becomes lost you yeah. don't get the context you don't get the context it's just, you just get the size, facts yes. bite sized yeah. pieces mm. yes at your own will when you can fit it in effectively yes so it almost becomes more like mm. marketing yeah. So it's yeah. it, it really is because you you're just getting these bursts of information, almost mm -hmm. like an advertisement about doing that, okay. um, but not actually fully understanding the context or the base. Yeah. Yeah. It's like well, I'd say reading a book. Um, if you sit behind a book and read it, there's generally a few messages in it that are, are taken through the book. But it's the journey, it's the story, it's the information around it that allows you to absorb and actually start to challenge your thinking around the way the book is is put together. I've read, for example, um, particular um, snippets of summaries of books, and it's like two or three pages, but mm -hmm. I don't find I get anything out of it. It's like just, here's the facts, this is what you could be doing, in the, but you don't get the why. You don't yeah. get the understanding and the background info. So that would be a big challenge if you're looking down that micro-learning path. Yes, and, yeah. and, and, and you know, reading that, you know, that blurb, sometimes micro-learning can be, well, often it is good in, in mm -hmm. getting people brought into a concept mm -hmm. where they want to learn more about it. Okay. So there might be three minutes sort of micro learning, but it mm -hmm. is more marketing really mm -hmm. because yeah, that yeah. three minutes they're taught about a concept, that concept appeals to them mm -hmm. or it works within the context within their operating or their, they, they find the motivation, they want to know more. Mm -hmm. And that can be the key to getting them to learn more mm -hmm. um, yep. and to go through a more extended type um, mm. training so process. It's a hook. And you're fighting for their um, attention. Correct. Attention, yeah. yeah. It's a hook. It's yeah. a yeah. teaser. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if, I suppose if you're giving tips, and small advice that yes. probably lends itself more to the micro learning. Yes. Rather than a full mm. concept. Correct. Yes. So a lot of the the, the digital um, 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 training or access to information that I've been working on is about providing some um, answers mm -hmm. to common issues that answers people issues. are facing. Okay. Issues. 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 Mm -hmm. um, uh, versus um, actually developing someone from you know from ab initio you know, through to being a manager or, yep. or similar, where, um, you know, you can't really do that through those small It's more like tips on better customer service, better retail environment, how to serve Correct. the customer, identify yeah. their problems and things like that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Get Would it. it be beginning from, this is how you greet a customer in the store, all the way up to advising on the type of prescription? Uh, it or can be, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, you know, there's assumed knowledge comes into this as well. So, you know, if you're providing solutions to, to problems, you're assuming that the person's already in a position or they already understand mm -hmm. a certain yep. thing. But that is very important because we all learn our behaviours and we have our beliefs, etc., mm -hmm. from when we first started within a job. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, and trying to shift those kind of behaviours, um, etc., mm -hmm. all starts with them 
getting a um, something that really clicks with them yep. um, and being a hook for them to, to yep. really delve into um, learning more about that particular area. Now, Craig, obviously you've been looking at technology to deliver this. You can't deliver this face-to-face. -face. Micro learning is more delivering probably video content, um, pieces of information. I imagine video is probably a big thing in what you're doing right now. Uh, it is. So I've mm -hmm. just recorded a few videos uh, recently yep. and um, uh, some others in my team have also been recording videos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, video is a good way to engage um, uh, with people and to talk about a, a particular topic or yep. a particular subject mm -hmm. um, in a short burst. Yes. Um, and and that short burst, you know, that as I said before, you know, it's difficult to get something across in three minutes unless mm. it's a sort of a hook. Mm -hmm. Conversely, it's difficult to keep somebody engaged for thirty minutes. Um, it is, yeah. yeah. It's a very different. So thing. that balance yeah. between the two is something that is still, a, I find, a challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the videos that I recently recorded were around twenty minutes okay. in length. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even for myself watching it, I was thinking, how do I cut this down? Because mm. it's, you know, it's. It's a long time to be sitting there and, and watching it. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that's just a behavior shift from, you know, the, our lives have changed with social media, using digital mm -hmm. devices in the way that we do and we mm -hmm. flick past things if we get bored. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we're more aware of becoming bored and we don't have to be watching anymore. Yep. And so that's what, that's what I'm fearful of. So probably when I'm recording future videos, yep. I'm going to try and keep it under 15 minutes yep. um, for each one because I feel that that's sort of a, more of a sweet spot uh -huh. um, that you can really engage somebody, um, firstly get their attention and keep them engaged mm. um, and get your key messages across and show them how they can actually implement and make change. Makes sense. Yeah, within mm -hmm. about 15 yeah. minutes. So okay. you sort of have to become a social media <laughs> expert to learn how to get people's attention. I think everyone does. Even though they should much, be invested yeah. in the topic. Yes. yes. It's for their benefit. Yeah. Even though, yeah, yeah. they don't yeah. have the span because they just don't want to. Mm. Yeah. Well, there was a... Um, I went to a, um, a conference where the head of Facebook digital content, video content, Mm -hmm. um, uh, was speaking. They said that it's interesting to, to, to think about people's behaviours and the way that mm -hmm. they, they relate to, to, say, videos. In the past, you used to have a TV commercial that which would go for 30 seconds yes. and it would finish on the key point. Mm -hmm. uh, now, it's almost flipped in that you have to get somebody's attention at the start for them to continue to be engaged with that video as yes. it's playing. So you need to have your key message at the mm -hmm. front because mm -hmm. it might be flicked past. Mm -hmm. Then you need to engage and take them on a journey and, mm -hmm. and end on the key message again. Yes. Okay. Um, so it's, a, it's, an, it's an interesting process. But hearing that made me shift the way that I approached things such as video. I mean, people don't want to sit there for, for 20 minutes and wait for the key point at the end. Like, I might like yeah. to think that they want to sit yeah. there and listen to me for 20 minutes to wait <laughs> so for the key point. get to the point, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah. and I think that comes back to the engagement in that if you, if you see the relevance to your role or to your business in mm -hmm. the information that's about to come, you're more likely to be engaged. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like anything, it's giving people what they're going to get out of this now. So at least they know upfront why am I investing my time? Because they really are. They're investing their time into this. Yeah. What am I going to get out of it? Okay, and then what is the background information? This is something I'm interested and in. And that's sort of where it differs from an ad yes. or a marketing hook because yeah. that's trying to get someone with no connection to it interested where you should already have some Correct. interest. Correct. I mean, they're already looking at, um, they're already looking on the page or they're yeah. already looking on the site. So there mm -hmm. is some interest component there. Mm -hmm. So it's really about being very um, concise upfront yes. about what they're about to learn. Cool. Now let's take it a few steps back. So mm -hmm. clearly there's some technology that's been involved in this process. Now you've been working at SLO for, I think, nine, 10 years, a bit more. Yes. 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 In, as an yeah. employee for, yeah. for 10, 10, no, I don't know. It's a while. Yeah. <laughs> that's what <laughs> 10 years, I think. Yeah. Close, yeah. close enough. Like a, a little lifetime. Um, yeah. So basically, what's changed? So when you first entered SLO, what was the thinking behind, and you were in the same sort of role, right? You're in mm -hmm. learning education in this space. So mm -hmm. what technology existed? And take us a bit on the journey of what custom development has looked like through SLO. Okay. Um, so when I first came on board, the technology was non-existent. Non-existent, okay. Basically non-existent. Yep. So if we think back, and, and I, I really started doing work for the company uh, 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. And 13 years ago, smartphones were not, not widely used. No. I don't even think they were around. I think yeah. that there was Blackberries. Yes. Yep. And I do remember getting my first one mm -hmm. when I was working um, uh, as an external consultant for the company. And so things have changed rapidly. Yes. And so I've worked in India for a number of years, and mm -hmm. I'll just use India as an example, mm -hmm. in that you know, 10 years ago, having a mobile phone 
mm -hmm. and it was a not 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 a smartphone, just a mobile phone, mm -hmm. um, was becoming more common okay. in India, but people definitely didn't have the smartphone capability. Whereas now, most people that are working in say an optical store or similar mm -hmm. will have a smartphone, yep. um, and they'll be using it, you know, quite proactively. The same in China. Now, China mm -hmm. actually, China was probably the biggest. Um, and dramatic shift that I saw from the different countries that I've worked in. Okay. In that um, it started off where, you know, the engagement aspect was always face-to-face. -face, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then over time, we've seen a shift. And that's both a shift in the, um, from, from what I do there from an education perspective, mm -hmm. or what I've done there from an education perspective, but also from a consumer perspective perspective mm -hmm. so we saw these shopping malls I mean, China developed so rapidly so I'd go there one month and then next month these things have changed <laughs> you know it was so so yeah. rapid and these massive yeah. shopping malls were opening up these massive cities were booming they were yeah. building cities everywhere building roads and and, mm -hmm. and 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 all of this and then things started to shift more towards online and yep, so the it. shopping malls, mm -hmm. et cetera, the way that people started to consume, instead of going to the shopping mall every night mm -hmm. and going for a walk, mm -hmm. um, became more about being online. Get it. Yes. So it um, shifted that quickly. So they're building these shopping malls in space of like 10 years and yes. then all of a sudden it's shifted to, we don't it's maybe need these anymore. Exactly. Just, so you have so ghost yeah. town shopping malls. Yeah. Westernizing quickly, yeah. but catching up before they found yes. the need for everything. Yeah. yeah. And mm. so WeChat, with WeChat, um, yeah. that was a dramatic change mm. in in China mm -hmm. so there was a lot of purchasing going online and yep. so then people started to have to think about you know well these shopping malls that we have built where you know people are coming <laughs> in and they're walking around um, now they're predominantly on their mobile phones whilst they're walking around yeah um, it's, a, it's a different level of engagement isn't it, it are is. they really engaged probably not probably not uh, probably not so yeah. from an education perspective a lot of it was driven face to face mm -hmm. so we'd have big sessions big classroom sessions you know with all the bills and whistles okay um, now you know you can you can have one of those sessions and, and people do get motivated they'll take away um, certain components and, and, and implement um, but as we shift we became asked more and more for digital content okay. that could be used yeah. through we through WeChat oh, or WeChat. Okay. Through, okay. So you yeah. direct the information to what they're using exactly mm. so if you wanted to engage with them you'd mm -hmm. have to go through the platforms that they're on most of the time yeah, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? It's like if they're using it on a, that's going to be easier for them to transition rather than here's another app, here's another website to go to to get access to content. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So, um, so that was a big, a big mm -hmm. shift, and and within our department um, in China um, was actually setting up a competition through WeChat. Yes. Um, which was an education competition in that okay. you would you would need to go through a whole series of basically micro learnings. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and by doing so, you qualified to enter into this competition. Ah, oh, so you're actually in enticing them or to actually access the, the learning itself. Yes, yeah. exactly. So mm -hmm. find, finding that motivation mm -hmm. um, and that worked um, quite successfully mm -hmm. and there were cutoffs, etc. So yep. those that, that progressed the furthest mm -hmm. um, were held in greater esteem, I guess you would yeah. say, and yeah. then they were also, you know, eligible for certain prizes. Okay. Um, and that worked, um, that worked quite well and yes. engaging, although it was quite expensive. Yeah, in terms of the technology itself or the prizes themselves? All of it. Bit of all of it. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> yeah. How um, many people did you have running through that program through China? Uh, there were thousands. Thousands, yeah. Okay, so it was a big undertaking for Essilor. And did you see some impact in terms of um, upside for businesses and sales? What was the impact of doing that? Uh, the impact was... Uh, well, it was it was across the across the board. So yes, from yeah. sales, yeah. Um, because the individual would need to be practicing what mm -hmm. they what they learnt, yes. Um, and then that could be monitored by particular ways. Okay. Um, so so that was kind of driving the impact as aspect of it yes. as well to ensure um, uh, mm -hmm. implementation. There's also that engagement component. So okay. that through that period, which it, I can't remember, I think it may have gone for as long as eighteen months, twelve okay. to eighteen so months. It was a long Decent. program. It's a long yeah. program, but then then people are engaged through that whole period, mm -hmm. yes. and so by being engaged, it, it really drives that loyalty mm -hmm. um, to to the company to the brand, once. the company, right? Yeah, exactly. But then the flip side of this is what happens after that twelve or eighteen months. <laughs> Get it? You can't just go cold because then they lose engagement with the company and direct access. Correct. So yeah. then that throws up more challenges. Okay. Um, um, to you know, challenges to address, mm -hmm. and it is it, that's mm -hmm. one of the challenges that is quite difficult to, mm. to 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 overcome. Is you know, always what's next? What's next? What's yep. next? There's always a next thing in this space. There's yeah, always there. another way to try and find something to exploit. Effect, effectively, for lack of a better word. Yeah. yeah. So there's always there's always a need to to think about that next step. 
Mm-hmm. So when this finishes, what's next? Mm. Um, and that I think is an is an area that has shifted in 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 behaviours that I've noticed over the past decade. Okay, is that you know some people are also looking at what's next. <laughs> yep. um, and I don't know whether dating apps have had something to do with that. Yet, so, <laughs> um, but yeah. there's definitely that kind of behaviour shift okay. um, that that has become a, that has become apparent. Um, otherwise, if I look at a market such as Australia, the shift there is more uh, online. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it's not as dramatic as some of these other markets that were already mm-hmm. through a, a rapid developmental stage. So within an Australian context, um, it's very much a blended approach. Okay, so a okay. bit online, offline, still yes. face-to-face yeah. engagement. It's probably because of the traditional people in the market, potentially, mm-hmm. and what they're used to. Mm. Yes, correct. And there's not that rapid expansion in technology. We've had it for 20 years. Yeah, correct. Where they've gone over that development in the middle tier for the last five to 10 years. Correct. Mm. And what goes up? comes down so if it goes up very rapidly yes probably comes down very (laughs) rapidly as well Mm -hmm. so um what we've seen was probably more of a consistent growth Mm -hmm. within australia so consistent change um in that more digital components are getting you Mm. know introduced Mm -hmm. um and it's really driven by people's you know people's other experiences as well so you see lots of different say businesses or if we take say Qantas for example Mm -hmm. how you used to book your airline ticket yes and how you book it today has changed dramatically and so that loyalty aspect and that engagement has really come in um Mm. uh, over the over particularly over the over the past decade um and so we look at at, at situations like that and behaviors like that and think well how do we relate Mm -hmm. in today's world Mm -hmm. um based on the shifting behaviors of of you know our customers and consumers that's yep. a very interesting take, and for people listening out there, if you're looking at um, building a product, it's really all about the customer. It's not about you, the product, the, even the education content. So you're thinking about all the detail on how you deliver this based on what the customer is going to engage with, because in reality, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for customer engagement, um, better buy into the brands, and you want to help these businesses too. So you're giving back to them, and it all works well in terms of creating value across the chain. Yeah, I yeah. totally agree. So yeah. it's a really good point. Yeah. So there's a, there's a, a term that I like to use yeah. quite a bit is about being professionally indulgent. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're yeah. all guilty of being professionally indulgent, yes. but being professionally indulgent means that it's about you mm-hmm. versus not, it's not about your audience. Correct. Yep. And yep. so if you're wanting to actually engage with somebody, you need to consider it from the audience perspective mm. or through you, who your target is. Yes. Um, so thinking about what their behaviours are like, yeah. what their you know what their mm-hmm. thought processes are like, mm-hmm. um, um, you know what they might be interested in, mm-hmm. and trying to incorporate that and thinking about the motivation from their perspective yes. versus the motivation from your perspective. Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. oh, I need to get this across, or I need yes. to say this, or I need to say that. But yes. what's in it for for the consumer, well, for the for the end user that you're yeah. trying to target? Mm-hmm. And if you can understand what the motivator, what the buttons are to push mm-hmm. with the end user, and you can push them, you'll be successful yeah and that's yep. the challenge that we're all facing right now because of that whole what you mentioned before the extent the um, attention span is minimal so yes. getting attention within a marketplace that's saturated with marketing content um, and your world educational content getting that across isn't that easy anymore so you no. really need to understand who you're working with your customers to drive on any piece of technology or education in this world yes yeah, and you're, you're fighting for attention mm-hmm. yes They've turned the, the coined that term the attention economy now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah very. That's 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 very that's very apt. Yeah. Um, uh, the more that you can understand who your customer is, the more mm-hmm. successful you will be. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if you're trying to just target everybody because you assume that they're going to come to you for mm-hmm. information or mm-hmm. education or for products or, yep. or whatever the case is, you're not going to be successful. Yeah. If you understand who it is that you're targeting within the market and mm-hmm. how you are different. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what you're actually giving to them. So what's in it for that person in coming yes. to you, you will be successful. Mm-hmm. So it's really about understanding who you are and mm-hmm. what it is that you're trying to mm-hmm. trying to deliver. Yeah, get yep. it. And then that changes consistently because our markets change, people are changing so rapidly that you need to keep up to with that. Like you said, obviously, uh, China's changed that drastically over a short time frame. You are, I imagine your delivery has changed from face-to-face to now WeChat. So that's a big change a big in terms change. of what you're doing there. So... Now, over the journey, you've developed different learning platforms, helping coaches actually train people. Mm -hmm. What's that experience been like getting on the top of, all right, here's, let's plan out a project. What does that look like? Where do you start when you go down that journey? An IT project? Yeah. (laughs) Firstly, um, 
So, uh, I mean, I've made a lot of mistakes in the past. In, okay. in, in, well, they're not mistakes. It's, you know, it's experience. <laughs> experience is another word for mistake, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's a better way to frame it, really, because in the end, we're paying for education as, well. yeah. as long as it's a learning experience. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a mistake. Yeah, true, yeah. true, true. Mm. So, um, often we think about, okay, the end, the end result, this is what we want, you yes. know, like, and that's, that's, you know, and that's it. Yeah, and let's okay. just do it. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, but it's not, it's not that simple. <laughs> it's, not that, yeah. it's not that not simple. That simple it's not that simple <laughs> okay so there's a whole series of steps that need to be taken to get there to that um uh, uh, uh to that end position so mm-hmm. looking at a new project mm-hmm. um is really to understand what are the objectives of this project yes number one because you can get consumed in the process and mm-hmm. forget the objectives mm-hmm. um and then you end up with something that's not fit for purpose yeah okay yep. so if you're very clear about what it is that you're trying to achieve from an objective perspective um, then you can start working and planning, okay, well, what are the steps to achieving this? Mm-hmm. Is this even possible to, mm-hmm. to achieve? What's the simplest thing that we can start off with yep. that can get something happening and mm-hmm. working and starting from there? And then how can we build upon it? So mm-hmm. if these are our objectives and our objectives are, are massive, mm-hmm. how are we going to get there? So that's then working backwards mm-hmm. yep. and thinking, okay, well, well, for this first phase, I'm going to, this is what the objective is yep. of the first phase. And because of the engagement aspect, engagement has to be part of it. So if you're mm-hmm. wanting somebody to, you know, or people to be actively involved in this mothership of a project that you're trying to create, yes. whatever that is, um, then you need to have people engaged with it early on and yep. bought into it early on. And that's yep. obviously customers. For obviously, you're a very large organisation. How have you found getting engagement through an organisation for an initi- initiative you're doing? Uh, which is building a tech product and then getting that through the organization itself because you've got so many content, so many people. What are yeah, some of those challenges that you face? Look, do you have to get the stakeholders and the champions on board right at the mm-hmm. start? Yes. So you need to make sure that you have all of the people that are likely to influence the outcome involved mm-hmm. at the start. At the start. At the start, okay. At the start, so that everybody's aligned mm-hmm. in what it is that we're trying to achieve. So aligned on objectives. Mm-hmm. And um, being very clear on you know what are the components that w- that are required mm-hmm. basically, yeah, okay. because one of the one of the learnings that I had um, previously was developing a um, an IT platform, mm-hmm. and uh, whilst I was very clear on what the overall objectives were okay. and it was all agreed to, mm-hmm. along the way people were adding in different adding in different. Different, different features, functions, because mm-hmm. it becomes feature function at that stage. Generally. Yes, feature function. Wouldn't yeah. this be good or wouldn't that be good? Yeah. Yep. Um, and then, okay, well, at that point, I was a bit naive. naive. Mm-hmm. So I would say, okay, right, well, we'll get that, yep. try and get that list. built built in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the list becomes huge. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the actual, you know, the back end processes uh-huh. being built aren't necessarily designed for that particular function at this point in time. It mm-hmm. might be yep. something that can be can be added onto it later. Uh So very quickly it becomes overly complex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, maybe three months later, that person that said that we must have this functionality added suddenly just asks the question or or says, why do you have this functionality in it? Why do you have it? So (laughs) then then you're back to back to back to square one and and and, you know it's cost money um, to do that. So being very clear at the start, having all the stakeholders involved Um, in the planning and, and what the objectives are, mm-hmm. thinking about what the stages are. If we're looking mm-hmm. to get, you know, engagement early on, yes. what can we do to get that engagement as a starting point uh-huh. and then build on the functionality um, from, from there. there? So just try and control that scope creep. Yes. 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 It's yes. probably critical through the whole path. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because it's very easy to do. Yeah, yeah we, <laughs> we've done it ourselves. Oh, just get yes. lock onto a feature and you think it's just a little thing to do this. It's just another little thing. Just surely you can just do that. Yes. Yeah, um, it, it's just the button. <laughs> yeah, but it's not that simple. I mean, yeah. I get it. It's not. It's yeah. it's it's not that simple. So, uh-huh. you know. Um, so now when I approach a, a project, you know, uh-huh. ultimately there'll be an objective. So if I if I look at a project such as tracking our education delivery, okay. Ultimately, we need to have the numbers about tracking that education delivery. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know, there's so many different ways to think about it. Say the person that, you're tr- that you might be training within a particular market, you know, it'd be great to track that person, you know, to track them to see what yep. kind of micro learnings they've done or what kind mm-hmm. of face to face that they've done, um, uh, etc. But the reality is doing that kind of tracking 
yes. is quite complex. It is. So yeah. you need to think about where do we yeah. start. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so, you know, where do we start? We, we think, okay, well, if we've got a blended learning approach, we already have mm -hmm. people engaged online, so there's already a tracking um, potential component, going, of, that. component yep. of that. Then we need to think, okay, from face to face, what are we doing from a tracking perspective? Now, as soon as you have human inputs and, yes. in, and involvement, there's potential for it to go wrong, yep. um, particularly when you have a massive, a massive team, um, such as we do um, within, within our department. So then it's important, okay, well, we need to structure this in a way so that we can get the immediate, most important information as quickly as possible mm -hmm. and make it as easy as possible for someone to use. Mm. And so then you have that, that, have that engagement, you have information coming from this source here, and then thinking, okay, well, in the longer term, this is probably going to need to have to talk to the, to the um, online type, um, um, type system so that we then might structure it in a way so that that can happen. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to happen from word go, necessarily. It doesn't yep. have to do either. And I think no. that's probably the learning from the objectives. And the, I think what you sort of alluded to there is defining what the end game is. What are yeah. we trying to get to? And don't, don't attempt to build the end game from the beginning. Yeah. Um, it's not about that. It's about, yeah, like you said, hitting goalposts, hitting key milestones. What is the first thing we can do? How can we create some value quickly, get some runs in the ball, get buying? Because how big is your team, to give people an idea? Um, so we're across the whole... Yeah. Res the, the total would be a couple of hundred. A couple of hundred, yeah. It's a reasonable team just in training yep. and education and across professional the services. Sport, professional, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's, it's a decent team. And then you have to buy in them as well because they're in the organisation. They're one of the clients because they're going to sell this for you, really, yep. um, into the customer. So one step at a time, everyone needs to get some value out of this and you have to consider them as stakeholders as well. Exactly. So yeah. even when working mm -hmm. through a new, a new system that, that's going to be deployed um, in countries and whether yes. that's an internal or external type, type system it's mm -hmm. getting input from people that will be the users mm -hmm. um and that also gives people ownership of what yep, it is that you're it developing does, yeah it gives, yeah, yeah they're getting invested yeah. in the process then yeah exactly yeah. and then if they're providing feedback mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. respect the feedback yes. and take the feedback on board mm -hmm. um and look at ways that you can incorporate that you're more likely to get that engagement definitely yep. down yep. the track um, but then again, you need to also weigh that up within the scope creep area. Yes. Um, issue. Yeah, it's got to be one step. It's a fine line. <laughs> Managed. Yeah. yeah. Because sometimes the, the ideas that come back are really good ideas. Yeah. And you can also, the other ideas that might come back, you think, mm, that's not such a great idea. Yeah. But then if you probe it further, you find out that's going to be a roadblock if this doesn't happen to yeah, that, okay. those yep. people using. And then you can make a decision, okay, do I need to make an adjustment here mm -hmm. um, based on getting greater engagement? Yeah. Yep. Um, or is it something that we can look at further down the line? Can mm -hmm. we do something small to get them engaged now mm -hmm. whilst working on towards that maybe down the track um, to get that full function that they're looking yep. for? I've had feedback before on, on functionality of, um, of systems mm -hmm. that you know is this huge change that they want. And I've learned that when somebody requests this massive change and yep. it seems like the end of the world um if you if they don't get it when you probe further uh -huh. we just you know start to asking the why questions asking the, the why what? questions <laughs> the or the ifs yes. yes um you suddenly realize it doesn't need to be that dramatic okay. a change but That's it's just their version of what yeah. they will do to make the change probably not Cor yeah explaining to you what the problem they really have is, is yeah. yeah the problem and i think it's alluding to that what is the problem they're trying to solve and sometimes we can in our head, create this big solution to that problem, mm -hmm. um, but not necessarily, and then at the same time, create other problems like yeah. big impacts on budget, have to change the whole system, and that's a yeah, big problem. Or it's right? just the first challenge. solution they thought of. Yeah. Well, it can be, yeah. and it can be what they're used to. So they might uh, be okay. reporting things. So mm -hmm. if I use yeah. tra training reporting as an example, mm -hmm. people report information in different ways. Okay. And so the immediate response is to make it what I'm doing now. So for that yep. person to try and give feedback so yes. that it, the system turns into what they're already doing today. That's yeah. what so they know, right? It's, it's what they know. Comfortable. That's right. Yeah, they're comfortable yeah. with it. Yeah. So by probing to make sure mm. or to find out if, uh -huh. if, if there's a way that they can use the system differently, yes to achieve the same outcome without right. needing to change everything dramatically. Yeah. So within our organization, we are creating something which goes across, you know, 90 countries mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, so many countries or more, 100 mm. countries, um, that we need to make it a system that can be somewhat 
standard. Um, it's otherwise, it's possible. Just, otherwise, yeah, you yeah. can't do it. Otherwise you can't make one for every country. A right. hundred separate systems. It's never that's right. Happen. That's yeah. right. So there needs to be that core functionality, yeah. which yeah. is really designed to achieve what your objectives are, uh -huh. but also an element of flexibility, so that users within certain countries yes. can do some additional, you know, um, reporting or analysis, uh -huh. um, um, and they can do that by themselves. As an example, yeah, get it. As opposed get the data to data out and do whatever they need to do beyond that system itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we kind of think of it like mm -hmm. a, a a core. So creating that standard system that's going to work for everyone to get engagement yes. across mm -hmm. the uh, whole region first, and then building on the um, any additional maybe um, uh, more customized components which yeah. might be used for a, an individual country. As so. an example, that would be your system to collect all the data and provide a standardized SLO format for a report, mm -hmm. but then give you a way to extract that data to make your own customized one for your region. Yeah, correct. Yep. Yep. Correct. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's something that I've learned and I've now practiced yeah. um, and it seems to be working a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and it's, you know, it just makes everybody much happier. Right? <laughs> and yeah, I think you can listen to every stakeholder. Yes. You don't have to do everything they say. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. correct. But well, I think yeah. what you that's said the about outcome driven in terms of when you look at a project, I think you need to get into the outcomes of your customers and you've alluded to that. It's mm -hmm. like, what are their outcomes? What are they trying to achieve from it? And then how do you get them to that without investing hundreds of thousands of dollars just to appease one country, one outcome, for example? Or one stakeholder. Yeah. And that's, we just yeah. ask them to pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that generally stops the question. <laughs> that's, that's an easy thing. For those out there listening, um, yeah, so I mean, this is always quite a, a juggernaut of an organisation. Um, I think you supply, what, 70%-ish of the whole of lenses in terms oh, of, I don't know. yeah, some yeah. large amount of lenses. Um, and so no, not all of us are in that boat in terms of that organisation or you're in a startup land but take away the key points it's all about the outcomes understanding the customers understanding the stakeholders who you're actually working with who you're engaging with understanding their outcomes and not being too uh, reactive to what they want because sometimes that can lead you down the wrong path away from your outcomes yeah and if yeah. you do react to what somebody wants to yeah. customize for them uh -huh. what you can end up doing is um, disengaging mm. with the mass interesting mm -hmm. So it's important that you know when you sit down with initially and do your project planning with uh -huh. the stakeholders involved, and you understand what your objectives are and what you know what the, the phases or you know what your goals are along uh, yeah. along the way, mm -hmm. is that you are very clear um, uh, clear on that you don't lose sight of that mm. from people inputting that you might seek feedback uh -huh. um, um, from different users etc. And if they have a very loud voice, the, yes. the feedback back come across quite strongly. But get it. And, and you might feel compelled to act on it, but you mm -hmm. need to think, is, am I still going to achieve my objectives? Am uh -huh. I still going to, and you know, your ultimate objective, objective is going to having, it's going to be about engagement, you know, as a starting, as a yep. as start point, because you can't get anything across without people being engaged in it. I think mm -hmm. it's a really good point to today's podcast about engagement. I think it hasn't come across anywhere um, in what we've discussed previously, because in reality, we're delivering a piece of technology to a marketplace, but mm -hmm. without engagement, no one's using this thing. Um, Correct. It's never going to really yeah. get fly, and you're not going to create a business model around it, whatever your objectives are. You yeah. can't build it and hope they'll just turn up and start yes. using it. Yeah. Right. You have to engage with them from the start to keep that carrying over afterwards. Yeah, correct. Otherwise, you're going to have an extremely hard marketing push mm -hmm. yeah. to then bring up that education at a later point, which is going to be very difficult. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so knowing how you're going to get people to engage with it, uh -huh. you know, at the start is very important. Okay. Yep. Um, because if you don't have people using it, it's a pointless exercise, <laughs> yeah, Pretty it? much. At the end yeah. of the day. It's just been a, a fun ride otherwise. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah, that's what we're all looking for. We want users that are engaging with the platform, getting outcomes out of it from themselves, delivering value, mm -hmm. um, as well as the organization getting value as well, or the business, whatever it might be. So it's all, a, we're looking for a win, 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 basically, mm -hmm. um, that can service our customers, stakeholders, and business itself. So mm -hmm. without engagement, it's never really gonna happen. And I think we've all been involved in projects, I think you at the table too, that have gone nowhere, got no users um, mm -hmm. on the platforms and, it's pretty sad and sorry when you go through a process of delivering some technology and then no one comes. Yeah. Um, and yeah. you don't want to be in that world when no one comes and no. you've got this uh, uh, elephant in the room saying, what's happening with this platform? Yep, no one's interested. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's a big challenge. That, and, and sometimes yeah. it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not that no one's interested, it's just mm -hmm. that they haven't yeah. 
haven't heard or they for yeah. some reason you haven't got the message across uh-huh. get it um and it's because the message may have become overly complex uh-huh. mm-hmm. because the platform itself has become overly complex and yep. it doesn't yes. need to be get it um and so thinking going back a step and always keep taking a step back what's uh-huh. in it for me mm-hmm. for the user if you want users they yes. need to there needs to be an outcome for them um, if that's clear, then your message about it is clear. So uh-huh. getting people engaged with it can become easier. Yes. Yep. When you don't have that, mm-hmm. um, that, that clear, concise, uh-huh. you know, what's in it for me, um, then it's going to be difficult to engage your users. I appreciate that. Does it become difficult then sort of like interdepartmental where you'll be focusing on an outcome that it affects another department and then that's why it gets stalled up and those stakeholders don't come on board? Because they need to change to their process or their culture or whatever it may be. It can, it can do, it can do. So I haven't had that challenge to date in my own personal project, but mm-hmm. I've certainly seen those mm. challenges okay. come about. Uh-huh. Um, in that, y- unless you do have, so this is comes back to the stakeholder engagement at the start. Unless you're quite yep. clear on who everybody that this is going to impact, yes, or everybody that you need to have buy-in from at the mm-hmm. start mm-hmm. then you can be working on something for a long period of time mm-hmm. and it might just fall in a heap because you haven't had that that um alignment across all the functions that that have gotten uh, that are involved in it yeah, and yep. you need to deliver value to each of those stakeholders um, yep. otherwise they're not going to be vested in it and they're not going to be interested long term so yeah if you miss a couple of key stakeholders it can be quite uh, problematic yep. when you're looking at <laughs> engaging them later and they say this doesn't really suit us or our needs or what our objectives are so mm-hmm. then you're stuck with a, a platform you can't actually uh, roll out through the organization yeah correct yeah. Um, and something as simple as say branding yeah. or as yeah. you know or or mm-hmm. particular messages that, messages that are used within it or uh-huh. thinking about privacy and security um, yes. you know there's there's all different um, components you need to consider uh-huh. up front if you yes. address them up front you're more likely to be successful. Oh, very, yeah. very good. And then in, say, in the history of all the projects you sort of work with, you're a large organization, and it'd be quite different to say what a startup would go through to build a product. But you're still probably effectively doing each product as a little startup, but you'd have different budgetary constraints. Has that sort of changed the way that you need to approach each project and get that, the MVP, like how quick can you get something started off the ground first before you can unlock more budget? Because you don't have yes. an unlimited bucket there, I'm guessing. No, there's not an unlimited. <laughs> in fact, so our, our, one of our values within our company is about entrepreneurial spirit. Okay. Um, and so a lot of the projects that we run uh, or that we create are, you know, it's like a, like having a startup and you need to have investors in that startup uh-huh. with yep. internal. You need to have internal yes. sponsors. Okay. Um, and so to achieve that, it needs to be clear on outcome. But then those sponsors have to see what's they're going to get out of it Uh uh, and what the company is going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you get that kind of sign off, then, then you can act and you can do it quickly. But then the challenge comes in, we're getting that alignment across departments once again, Uh um, or alignments across all stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it can, can slow things, slow things uh, up in comparison to, Mm -hmm. you know, somebody that's doing something as a startup. Get it. Okay. Yeah. In terms of entrepreneurial spirit, dive into that. What does that mean for SLO in terms of the organisation? Um, so what it means is we're given f- we're given freedom. Yeah. Okay. So we're given freedom mm-hmm. to have ideas. Yeah. To mm-hmm. have concepts uh-huh. and to drive that. Yeah. Nice. Within our roles, we're you know we're we're entrepreneurs. So mm-hmm. you know you you're accountable for your ideas. Yes. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, and your successes are celebrated. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and that's that's something that's quite ingrained within the company. I like it. Mm-hmm. And so, this is why we have the opportunity opportunity to do you know mm-hmm. projects or doing thinking outside of the box. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and I know myself working on a, a you know a portal for business owners to use. Yes. Having that kind of opportunity to en- engage with them and to think about it in different mm-hmm. business structures yes. and and you know all of that is 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 possible mm-hmm. within the yep. organisation. Mm-hmm. The only challenge comes when if that does impact across yes. you know other other areas within the business, mm-hmm. um, and then working out okay any challenges that are that, that crop up how do we how do we address that? Understand. Okay. And we are a fairly fast moving um, company, so uh-huh. we, you know there's new brands, there's new products, um, yes. uh, etc. Coming out all the time, um, and so being agile so that we can adapt. So again, it's coming back to that core what it is that you're trying to achieve from this. Mm-hmm. Yep. But there needs to be that element of flexibility so that you can adapt under different situations. Yep. Mm-hmm. Get it. Um, um, but the fundamentals remain remain the 
it. So. Well, do you okay. believe that comes from the fact that Essilor is really an innovation, innovative company mm -hmm. at the grassroots? That's what you are. You're all about innovation in lenses. Um, yep. Do you think that's drive through the culture itself in terms of the way you approach it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so okay. we are. Um, that's yeah, it's one of our core values. Is mm -hmm. being is the innovation. We are. Yes. We are the largest in the. Um, no vision care realm, but certainly within yeah. lenses, uh -huh. we have the largest spend on research and development. Yes, okay. um, we have some big um, R and D teams mm -hmm. uh, around the world um, who are constantly looking at mm -hmm. you know what's next and what's yep. new, mm -hmm. um, and and driving forward with innovation. You know, not not every idea comes to fruition. And it can't. Well, and of course, in not. reality, um, I think if if you're in startup land or in a corporate, not mm -hmm. every idea is ever going to work. No, Correct. <laughs> doesn't work that way. If we had an idea and just implemented it and had customers knocking our door, life would be very easy. It doesn't it'd be work very, that way. It'd be yeah. very easy. And yeah. you know, sometimes an idea is a great idea, but yeah. it's, but it's going to impact another area of the business uh -huh. that you need to be aware of. Yes. Um, and you know, it might be cannibalizing uh, just okay. you know, yeah. another area of yeah. the business. So that mm -hmm. needs to be taken into consideration mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And you can't prioritize everything at yes. once mm, yep. and so thinking about what you're going to get the best outcome from mm -hmm. as a starting point yep. and then working working on that would be the you know the, the smart thing to do yep. um, and what we're driven to do as well I think what you mentioned about priority so it doesn't matter how big small or indifferent your project is where you're starting from um, starting from outcomes is pivotal but then you can have a mass of features and functions that might deliver that outcome, but how do we prioritize it? I think it's digging in and looking at, yeah, what is going to come first? In your world, it's about what's going to actually deliver engagement, what's going to maybe help the stakeholders get buying. Mm -hmm. um, in a startup world or in a, a smaller world, it can be what's going to get me my first customer, <laughs> what's going to engage them. But it's a very similar conversation. It is so, a similar, yeah, it is yeah. a similar conversation, but it's yeah. a very good point about yeah. the uh, functionality because everything's yes. a good idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then, yeah. you know, it's not yeah. necessarily the yeah. most, the top yeah. priority. So yeah. thinking about, okay, what's the objective of that function? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is it going to, is, is, it, is it aligned with what the overall objectives we're trying to achieve at this point in time are? Yes. So if we are trying to get engagement by mm -hmm. doing this, is that mm -hmm. going to drive increased engagement? Mm -hmm. um, then consider it from then a priority. It, it yeah. becomes a value yeah. to the product, right? Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, we can, and like you said earlier, you can get lost in the, the next step in the scope correct. Uh, creeps in uh, from a scope creep perspective if we're looking at value driven approach in terms of features and functions at mm -hmm. that low end and your objective it makes it a hell of a lot easier to say yeah we're going to do this but this really isn't going to add as much value and not get us to objective at all so let's maybe put that into the pile or wipe it off completely mm -hmm. yep. yeah. if you even think about so if we think about facebook yes when mm -hmm. facebook came about yep. um you know it was a social network and that was its main Objective. That's all it did. Yes. Yep, yep. That's right. Yeah. And then all these additional functions have been yeah. added over time. Yes. Um, uh, in a fashion and based on what the objectives are, it might yes. be about making money. It might be about engaging yeah. with the the mm -hmm. the um, um, the users more. Um, um, get added on later on, but it's still ultimately the core is still yeah. there, which is the um, the the networking function. So, mm -hmm. um, um, I kind of look at some projects that have become way too big too quickly. Uh huh. Um, because they've lost sight of what the you know the underlying the original objective yes. was, mm -hmm. um, and because they've become too big or too complicated, or people can't understand because now you know our attention spans are less, and they're uh -huh. not going to sit there for ten years and mm -hmm. try and figure it out. Um, it can fail. Yeah, yep. and that's that's a big challenge because then you've got it's like niching. It's like if we were doing anything, we're niching. So we're solving a problem for one person. Um, when we're trying to solve everyone's problem all at once, it's mm. very hard to sell and it's very hard to basically communicate that across to people because you might only be helping this person a little bit now um, and this whole other stuff around the platform doesn't give them any value. So why are they going to engage with it? So it becomes very difficult if you're going down that path. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So digging in a little bit more now, you've got an outcome, you know what you're trying to do, you've written some features, some functions. How do you engage a development team? Not becoming Coming from a non-tech, what do you generally do? Um, what's worked in the past? What hasn't around that world? Oh, that's a very good question. So um, so we know, so if we've got the, the features or what we're trying to achieve, so mm -hmm. our objectives um, yes. uh, laid out, engaging with the tech team, for, for me, look, I'm, I really have very limited understanding of tech. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. So yeah. turn it off and turn it back on again. So what is the extent? <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah. no, I, I, I don't understand the process, but I am quite good at 
um, structured planning. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So engaging with, the, with a, uh, a, a tech company, it's important that there is that structured approach from mm -hmm. my perspective. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but also, so the technical aspects of it, I don't understand. Uh -huh. but, I, but I need to know what the milestones are or what we're working on at yes. any particular time and what we're mm -hmm. trying to, and, and what the, how we're going to achieve the objective. Yes. Yep. Yep. Then along the way, so for me, being a non-tech person, I have uh -huh. to see it to understand it. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so yep. I need to see the function. I need to see how it's how uh -huh. how, how how it would work. Uh -huh. um, and then, um, um, you know, and that, so that's it from a tech company working with a tech company. Uh -huh. That's really important to okay. me. You know, having that time to discuss it and to uh -huh. talk through and to test and to look and to uh -huh. you know experience and get other people to pilot it and test it and give you mm -hmm. feedback mm -hmm. um, is quite is quite important. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, you know, I, I travel a lot um, yes. and having that flexibility yeah. as well in that I can't do everything at once. Mm -hmm. And so I also prioritize my time and that's, is, is, and, and working with the, um, um, working with the provider, you know, getting them to understand that there's an element yes. of flexibility from a timing perspective as well that might be required uh -huh. um, um, is, is important. Yeah, and I think one of the things you touched upon is that open communication and discussion. And I mm -hmm. think if you're really going to go down this path, you need that level of communication because um, we are talking to non-techs on this podcast and it, the, the challenge is you don't really know what goes into delivering a piece of technology yeah. until you've seen what completely blows up and doesn't work. So um, and involved, being involved in projects that just have endless amounts of not delivering um, and challenges through that. So you really want to get an open communication channel going mm -hmm. and you have to have good trust in your team. So you have mm -hmm. to find a team you can collaborate with, mm -hmm. uh, be willing willing to actually work with them so you can get them aligned to your objectives. I think yep. it's really important because sometimes uh, if you're not, if you're engaging with a tech team or so, uh, someone that's delivering your service, um, the alignment of objectives needs to be understood. They need to understand your big picture plan. Mm -hmm. They need to really get clear on what you're trying to achieve. But that might be your future plan. So that might be two, three years down the track. Mm -hmm. If you compare it back to okay, what's the short term objective? Now we've got a roadmap here. We've got a plan. We've got a, what we're working on. Mm -hmm. um, from a technical perspective, it can be designed for the big thing, mm -hmm. but it can be delivered at the starting point. So. Yes. And that's really important, what you said around outcomes. And I think mm -hmm. having that clarity from your perspective, walking and into in that, that conversation is massive. Communication, you probably need a team that doesn't just speak developer to you. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it needs to be layman terms. Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, and that comes back to professionally indulgent as well. But I know <laughs> that, not to do that with my <laughs> yeah. clients. Um, I would actually like to bring up a, a point of uh, a learning that I had, and that yeah, was okay. engaging yes. um, a, a team offshore. Okay, okay, yeah. And the challenges faced with engaging a team offshore um, were immense. Immense. Yeah. Because okay. the communication wasn't there. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and so you could see that they didn't have a clear understanding of what it is that you were trying to achieve. Uh -huh. They didn't mm -hmm. understand. They didn't have you know understanding of the industry, no understanding of what you were trying to do, but they were the cheapest. Yes. Okay. And so... Cheapest. Cheapest. Yeah. Yeah. And so at yeah. the time, at the time, uh -huh. this is many years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so it was... Um, you get what you pay for. Yeah, we've it's, and yeah. it was cheap and nasty. Uh, and uh, as you've had to help resurrect <laughs> and try, well, and I wouldn't say it's resurrect. It's more just keep it alive. Keep it, keep, keep it alive. It's resuscitated yeah. every now and then. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, and thankfully, we can uh, we can we yeah. can finally put it to rest. Yes. Um, soon. Um, but yes. So that was one of the one uh -huh. of the key challenges. Now there was an in intermediary that I used uh -huh. in that process. Yes. Um, and then you have additional communication channels, which, mm -hmm. you know, the message from from me to the intermediary, and then the intermediary passing that on. Yes. Yep. That was that did not work. Didn't work. Yeah. Did okay. not work. So um, because the intermediary didn't really understand what it is that we're trying to achieve either, didn't have the time to devote to, okay. to, mm -hmm. to reviewing it and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and were the um, gatekeeper really to the, to yes. the information that okay. I had or understanding. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, you can, you, can, you can have an intermediary that you mm -hmm. trust is doing the right thing in, 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 in your interest, but then you realize that they just didn't have the time to devote to it. They didn't okay. understand the prioritization okay. of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was a challenge. Whereas, if you're dealing directly, uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, you know, you can you can you're more agile to respond to things. Yes. You're, yes. you can get across your message more clearly. But mm -hmm. there's a two-way communication as well mm -hmm. to yep. to discuss any challenges yep. or to have any queries. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it just makes it makes 
makes life a lot easier. It'll really. be easier for you to pick up the wrong things in yes. their general conversation back yes. to you yes. Mm-hmm. rather than them saying the wrong thing to him, him interpreting it one way and then him giving you another set of wrong things that don't yes. reflect the first ones. Yes. Yeah, correct. So, yeah. And, 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 and it costs money. Yeah. Um, so, it's spending money on this. Yeah, yeah, you're saying, yeah, you said they were the cheapest. Was that the cheapest because of the budget you had? It so, was, you could get more out of it? It was the no. So, the because it was a project that we, you put forward based on... Um, so you put forward the, the quotes, et cetera, mm-hmm. based on particular functionality. And it was one that was, that was I didn't select, but it was selected. Yeah, okay. Um, and yeah. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that didn't, that, that, that didn't go. Obviously, it didn't go very well. didn't go play. very well. Yeah. But it, I mean, it yeah. was the cheapest at the start. Yes. At the start, but yeah. the long, on the long term, yeah. it's definitely not the cheapest. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you know, when you're developing a, a platform, and 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 in that kind of situation where mm-hmm. there was an intermediary, you're presented with the final product to review. Yep. Yep. But the but the problems may be may have you know that you find in it may have uh-huh. been ones that could have been overcome Picked up earlier. Earlier. Yep. Mm-hmm. In which case, it wouldn't cost so much to yes, change fix it. to yep. fix or. Well, we had another client go through something similar. They had an overseas team with intermediary in their country. Mm-hmm. Um, and when they were looking up quotes, he spoke to, apparently to the CEO of the outsourcing firm. Mm-hmm. And he goes, you might find be- better developers in other countries, but you won't find anyone cheaper than us. That's a great right. selling point, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> and that's how he was selling himself. We'll be the cheapest developers anywhere mm-hmm. in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Per hour rate. That's the way they model it, right? But, and yeah. And then yeah. in that specific job, they estimated 8,000 hours of development. Yes. Yeah. Which, which we, looking at that, would have been under a thousand yeah yeah okay yeah yeah so eight times the hours at a cheaper rate yeah <laughs> that yeah. yeah well it's not cheaper is it no. <laughs> um i think that it does go on quite a bit um mm-hmm. so this is this is you know it's a the whole sector is huge it's a yeah. massive it's sector huge. There's, there's, yeah. there's and, and you don't know what you don't know no yeah so you right. might think they're doing the right thing but now that you've gone through several projects, you can sort of find these red flags yes. and identify them. Yes. Yeah. But if yeah. it's your first one, yeah. or when you were doing your first one, you wouldn't have known that you're sort of out of your depth as much yes. with software because it's software alone yes. and yes. how complex things can be. And that's yeah. the thing we see with a lot of the startups. They, I can manage this or I've, I've been successful in this other business mm-hmm. and they try and do software and they don't understand all the little intricacies that make software and mm-hmm. how things can affect it. And things completely out of your hand can affect your project. Mm-hmm. Yes. Apple yes. releases an update. This thing's killed. Yes, the whole project yeah, exactly. pivots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've seen you know lots of situations, or you know you're developing an app, or you know, or or similar, and there's just so many different influences, influencing <laughs> factors when yeah. it comes to that, um, and you know obsolescence comes into it as well. That's you know, mm-hmm. and if you're mm-hmm. reliant on on something else, whether it's a device or mm-hmm. or, or whatnot, it can have a dramatic impact. Then thinking about the the costing of you know updates and yep. and factoring all that in right at the start, it's quite yep. a complicated, mm-hmm. um, quite a complicated process. If you're entrusting that onto somebody that's going to do it, apparently the cheapest, yes, um, then there should be a question mark. Okay. I think yep. um, I'm not saying that cost isn't important. Cost is very important, mm-hmm. but it's about yep. the value that you get out of it. Yep. Um, the value of the process and mm-hmm. the value of getting it done quickly yes. as opposed to going around in circles for a long mm-hmm. time um, mm-hmm. and yeah. ending up with an inferior outcome. Yeah, yeah, that's not where we want to be, right? It's about, in the end, um, we need to really jump forward and look at the outcomes we're trying to achieve and mm-hmm. understand what the value of those outcomes are. Mm-hmm. I think we can sort of jump on the fact of, yep, this software's going to cost me X. That's a lot of money where I find that budget. But if that X will deliver value of 10 times X, then yeah. that conversation really shouldn't come up. There should be a conversation of quality. If you can't justify a, a return on your investment, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, don't get involved and don't deliver it. You need mm-hmm. to be yeah. able to justify that up front. You're just mm-hmm. walking into headaches. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's right. And a lot of sleepless nights, I'm guessing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and I think that if you don't, it might demonstrate that you don't believe in what you're mm-hmm. doing. Mm-hmm. If you yeah. are looking just at the price and thinking, oh, well, let's lower it down, lower it down, lower it down to get a return on investment. Yes. Because what you're then doing is you're just trying to do this. Uh, the safest. The almost. safest, yeah, the yes. safest solution uh-huh. as yep. opposed to, you know, thinking big or thinking yes. yep. what is it that I'm really trying to achieve from this mm. and investing the time, yep. energy and money. To get it right. To get it, it right. Yeah, trying to minimize your risk effectively yes. at the outset. Yes. So if it doesn't work, we've only lost $20,000. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So then I can tell you what, what's going to happen is it's not going to work. <laughs> it's because you haven't invested the money or yeah. you haven't invested yeah. you haven't invested in it at, at, at the start. And so yeah. then when it doesn't work, you say, oh, well, lucky I didn't invest in it then. It yeah, and that's not necessarily the case. If you do right. something long enough, hard enough um, and com committed 100%, mm -hmm. you will get value out of it. Um, it may be a longer game than you think, but you will deliver value if you're 100% mm -hmm. committed. And in that realm of I'm looking to reduce price, maybe you're not committed. Maybe you're just putting your toe in the water, but putting your toe in the water really doesn't get us anywhere yeah. in anything, mm -hmm. let alone in, in building tech. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it'll end up costing you more than your initial investment. Yes, plus the yeah. headache and heartache of going through that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the hope, the best you can hope for is you've learned something from it at the end. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, but you know, in this journey of, mm -hmm. of working with you guys yeah. and um, just in having all these different um, sites and and whatnot in mm -hmm. general through the company over the years, um, I've made a lot of learning. Yes, yeah. and there's certain things that I'll, yeah. you know, that I'll always do, and there's certain things now that I'll never do. And never do. What's the never do? For uh, example, well, one of them was yes. the, the offshore. The offshore. Yeah. Um, one of one of them was uh, um, there needs to be there needs to be control. So somebody needs to be in control. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. if you're reliant upon somebody else, yes, who is not necessarily as committed to the project as what you are, uh -huh. or understand the context, then that's going to fall in yes. a heap. Yep. Um, because what it is that you're relying on them for, for might not actually happen. happen. Get it. Um, and if it's a critical thing, um, then that, that can be a big problem, mm -hmm. uh, which we encountered a couple of years ago, yes. um, mm -hmm. which you resur resurrected. But again, <laughs> we went through exactly the same heartache yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and pain yeah. Yeah. Um, for, the, for the second time. Um, um, so that's, that's they're, they're things that I definitely wouldn't do. Okay. Things that I would definitely would do um, for future projects is to keep it simple at the start. Mm -hmm. Get it. So mm -hmm. the simpler it can start off, the more robust I feel it is, uh -huh. and then build upon it. Okay. Um, and and being very clear on that, because if you have these objectives which are far off objectives and what you're trying to achieve, it's uh -huh. easy unless you're very clear on what your phases are or what you know what your your stepping steps are yes. to achieving it. You know, components of that long term thing that you're mm -hmm. you're very excited about yeah. can creep in too early. Yeah, they mm -hmm. can. And so yeah. that kind of excitement and just you know understanding that you'll get there mm, you yeah. just need to go in one step at a time in the one motions one to make step it work at time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um because if you introduce things early sometimes there are trade-offs later as uh -huh. well like yes. you might yep. be bringing something in early some kind of functionality early uh -huh. um but by doing so the back end might have been cons i don't know these are non-technical terms because as i said <laughs> i'm not okay. 90 person yeah. but you know but the, um, or the code uh -huh. might be written in or constructed in a particular way. Is yes. that even correct? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> you can take a seat in our office now. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so yeah, it might be constructed in a way which won't allow yeah. you know yep. other functions that yes. down uh, further on that you really want, and you might find out that, that you know your planning was absolutely correct to uh -huh. start with, mm -hmm. um, yes. but then you're in a in a bit of a pickle, and you might you know cost a lot of money because it costs a lot of time to yeah. um, uh, to fix it. So being very clear. Um, up front, uh -huh. um, you know, yes, it's great to have every functionality in the world, yes. but really starting starting off simple, getting what you need at that point in time based on your objectives. So if it is engagement, mm -hmm. something simple that is giving a you know people immediately get get a benefit from it, yes. mm -hmm. um, then you know it's going to build when you have more users, then you build on functionality, mm -hmm. build on it, build on it, build on it, mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's really the way to um, to to look at it. I had no idea, really, in in, yeah. you know, in in the in, you know what what is required from um, from developing software or sites or um, and just assumed that it could all happen. So you just plug it in. Yes, <laughs> 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 jumped up. <laughs> and that's from our end. In our early days, yeah. we would say yes to everything. Yeah. Yeah. So you would assume, yep, I want this function. We would just say yeah, yes. Can do yeah. that. And yeah. then we had some projects that failed and some that were successful. Yes. But it's yeah. Important to know your long-term vision mm. when yeah. we're developing something, so then yeah. we can make that code yes. yep. stable to grow. Yeah, that's, that's example of you going to an architect and going, "All right, I want a house." He designs your single-story house, and then next week you go, "All right, I want an underground car park and triple and triple story." <laughs> yeah, if yeah. the foundation isn't right, mm. you can't get that yeah, unless you, you tear it down yeah. and start again. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, very yeah. true, very true. And I think you touched on one thing there um, was about risk. Now you've talked about price being a risk, looking for the cheapest, but you've actually alluded to what I consider more of a holy grail of how you minimise your risk. 
starting very small mm -hmm. on the key core components that are going to deliver the value, investing mm -hmm. in them right now, mm -hmm. but building a platform that's going to allow you to scale and move and shift and mm -hmm. continue to add value. So that's a better way of, from my perspective, of minimizing risk rather than going down the fact of, let's try and build everything for the cheapest possible price. And yeah. It's never going to work. Tell us everything yeah. that you want and we'll get it priced for you. Yes. yes. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is what we need as a starting point. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's, that was a problem, you know, yeah. using offshore and yes. et cetera, you know, tell us everything that you want. And yep. let's, let's just go. Yeah. Because, you know, it's a journey. And the journey, there are things that change along the journey. Yep. Yes. There are some things that can happen. There are uh -huh. some things that shouldn't happen, yep. um, you know, because it might have a negative impact on yeah. yep. engagement or, mm -hmm. or and you learn that through the process, right? Yeah, it's not about something you're going to pick up at the time of deciding what we're going to need in this thing. No, it's yeah, just yeah. even when you release it and someone starts using it, it might just completely shift the way you take the next phase of the yes. project because Correct. they're using it differently, like getting something different that you didn't see out yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. And something uh, something that I found really interesting, and this is just me being a complete layman when it comes to yeah. uh, IT, is that there are different languages. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there are different languages. And the way that people yeah. write code, yeah. etc. Yeah. So that yeah. was another challenge in yeah. the... Uh -huh offshore is you know then you have to learn how it is that that person really thought yes. mm -hmm. or how they constructed it mm -hmm. um, and understand that to be able to make to make change so you know that's a um, that was a massive learning for me okay you know yeah. but it's not all yeah. the same no yeah. it's a big unknown and it's an industry that is like you said so widespread there's no standards across the industry there's no one at the there's top no one saying you must them. follow this process um, so you get a ver a varied yeah. approach to how things are developed there's what we call spaghetti go code where people just slap things together because mm -hmm. uh, they don't know any better mm -hmm. um, and then right down to the what is enterprise and how yeah. you deliver that out and how you manage that how do you build automated tests into your products to ensure quality mm -hmm. um, these are some of the things that people don't even consider have no absolute knowledge about and yeah. it's challenging when you're walking to something that is perceived to be okay it's a few buttons here and there but it is complex to know mm -hmm. that in, in your world you're going to have thousands of thousands of users potentially using a platform how to deliver something that's actually going to scale with you mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so it's and a very yeah, even if it's the same language it's the way it's written in yes. that language changes yes so it's yeah. like a sh two chefs reading a recipe yes. one follows a quarter of a cup exactly and the other one just goes yeah that's about a quarter of a cup yep <laughs> Like those TV chefs online. It's going to yeah. taste different. Yes. A pinch of this and a pinch of that. Yeah. yeah. What's a pinch? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Craig, um, I think we might wrap it up there. I think yep. that's been a really good chat for uh, everyone that's really um, from a non-tech perspective what it actually means and being in a corporate world the different alignments that you have and different um, things you need to consider about a stakeholder engagement but in mm -hmm. the end you've touched upon let's look at a project let's know what our outcomes are let's Bear, bear, pair it back to bare bones basic and deliver it on something that mm -hmm. we can actually take one step at a time. So I really appreciate you coming in and sharing your, your thoughts mm -hmm. and uh, theories about how to work on development projects. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, thanks, thanks so Craig. Craig. And thanks. if anyone wants to find anything else about Essilor or yourself, where can they uh, You can have a look uh, on, uh, at www.essilor.com. Yep. yep. Um, there's plenty of information. Plenty of, and if you want to problem. connect to Craig, he's on LinkedIn, Craig McFarlane. I'll